Hi, my name is Evgeny, and this is the first video lab about XBD, with gel code generator which is almost ready to be released. XBD stands for Extensible Behavior Description, structured way to describe behavior of device you want to get. In this video lab, I'll show you how to describe stepper motor driver. So let's jump straight to my lab and see what we are going to build before you get too bored. Okay, so here I have a high definition video. Okay, so what do we have here? This is uh, Altera FPGA board. I got Arduino stepper motor, all connected with a bunch of wires, and this is our superhero who volunteered to assist me. And he got a little bit of a blue tack on his butt so he doesn't fall off. Okay, so the device is very simple. Got two buttons, spin one, press one spin in one side, press another one spinning other side. Here we go. Okay, another side. Good. And if you press two buttons, nothing happens. Okay, nothing fancy. That can be done in Arduino easily, but the idea is that there's no microcontroller involved in pure hardware. So let's have a look uh, how it is described in XBD. And also I will talk a little bit about framework itself. So let's have a look first at the environment I have. So I'm using Visual Studio to do XML editing because it's very nice support for XSD. And uh, another part, main part of XBD is a command line tool. So I'm using Fire Manager to actually involve the transformation, but any command line tool will do. And I got Altera Quartus software to actually program my device. Okay, so let's have a look at Visual Studio and see the description. So you see it's got a bunch of uh, XML elements and which instructs the code generator about the structure of your device. So root element is a controller configuration. We define name of the device and the board frequency. It is used to calculate all times for timers, for delays, and so on. So my board clock is 24 megahertz in that case. So the core principle of XBD is event-driven sequences, which implements the required logic of your device. So controller consists of multiple user mod modules, and each of user module consists of multiple user blocks. You'll see it later. So everything starts with the event. In this case, I have two events. First event is a step control event, which is linked to timer, and second event is a step changed event, which is linked to a change of a step register. Alright, so here is a timer, which kicks in every 5 milliseconds in my example, and to have a state, I have a two registers. One is a 3 bit register step which holds the step of the motor motor in this example has eight steps in total and you have a register called stepper it's a four bits register to control the current state of the pins of the motor you got four pins to control the state of internal rotor okay so in order to be really useful device has to talk with the external world so to do that you have registered signals and external signals. Difference between them is that a register signal holds its state after you change it. So you, you can have input or output signal with lengths, you have some default value and you can specify whether the value is inverted or no when it goes outside. Okay, so external signal is a bit, little bit different. It's just a wire going in or out and it doesn't hold any state so it only get assigned to something when uh, sequence is in a, a assigned state for this particular signal so in our case we got two buttons uh, just external signals we got step LEDs this is for debugging to, to, the, to display current step of the internal state machine and this is stepper LEDs to display current state of the pins 
the yarn we worked and we have stepper pins which actually hooked up to the motor okay then we have all these things to hook to make it working so we have set of constants constants like logical high logical low this is an interesting one this is a lookup so we are doing lookup from state from a step which is a 3-bit register to a motor step which is a 4-bit register so one for each step we have corresponding values to be assigned to motor pins okay so here we have some math so we add one to the step we subtract one from a step to depends on the condition whether the forward button or reverse button is pressed and here we have is faulted which is get fired when both buttons are pressed so we don't do anything okay so now we reach the most important part of the device actual sequences which are responsible for doing the work so first sequence is controlling current step of the motor so it checks for faulted signal and just skip the whole logic it checks for step forward so when the forward button is pressed and if it is it goes there it perform assignment of forward step to the register step da stands for dimensions adapter so this guy is like one of the main elements in the system it perform assignment source to target based on the sizes of both elements it does either truncation or fill up with uh, zeros so you don't have to manually worry about it so once we assign step forward we just finish the sequence if reverse button is pressed we jump to step reverse and decrement one from current step and finish it and if none of these conditions are met we just go to finish so then second sequence is uh, responsible for assigning pins depending on the current step so here we actually doing a lookup so we're looking up motor step and assign it to stepper stepper is uh, our register for holding pins and then we assign all things to outside so these are for debugging this is to indicate current step on uh, LEDs of the, my device and this actually goes hooked up to the device okay and finally all these things are wrapped up into user blocks so here where you define which event triggers which sequence so step control event which is a timer event calls step control sequence to start working and the step change event which is triggered to change in a re step register trigger step change sequence all right now let's see this all in action so once we wrote this xml file we need to translate it into vhdl code so this is a command line tool used okay just call this and a bunch of pipeline steps and transformation happens see them all there are some debug information which you wouldn't see on a release here we go so it's all done so it 100% finished and this is the size of the file you get out of it then we go to quartos and we can see the actual code so this is a root entity with buttons with LEDs with pins and so on so it you can see some debug information some diagnostics which will help you to check what was the source what size values and so on bunch of signals so there is actual processing some processes uh, checking for clock assigning and so on so if you are interested you can have a look at this but it's not nothing really fancy there just very accurately combining all the steps and so on so once we compile that so it gets programmed and you will get stepper motor okay and then there are some stats so I'm running this from bit all project so this is a stepper motor this is a stepper motor okay so when we run that 
we will get statistics. So file got 1400 lines of code this comment stripped out so we got 239 signals and 98 processes so if you do it manually you probably will get lesser numbers but it doesn't really matter quartus is good enough to figure it out all right that's it for today and uh, thank you for watching